We're gonna make some caramel toffee squares. This is a three layer bar. So you've got your cookie bottom, your caramel in the middle, and the chocolate on top. We're gonna to start with one and a half cups of butter. The recipe tells you to have it cold, but I like to soften it because I just find it so much easier to work with when I'm trying to get it in my cookie sheet. So I got one and a half cups of the butter, three quarters of a cup of sugar, and three and three quarters of a cup of flour. And we're just gonna mix this together. It'll probably be a crumbly texture. You can see it's starting to crumble together. It's not gonna to come completely together because there's you have to be able to press it into the pan to make it all come together. So this probably take about a minute for that to come together nice. All right, so you can see the crumbly texture. I just want to see if I can get it to come together just a little bit more because it is harder to work with when it gets too crumbly. I'll just show you what that texture is. So it, it is crumbly, but if you would squeeze it together, it will pack, and that's what you want, because you want to be able to pack it into your cookie sheet. So I'm just going to get my mixer out of the way, and then we're going to press that into our cookie sheet. All right, so I have my cookie sheet, which is a 12 by 17 cookie sheet, and we are going to press this in. It's going to be fairly thin. And you have your oven preheating. I see my oven is now up to temperature. Got, get your oven preheating at 350 degrees. And we're going to bake this for 18 to 20 minutes until it's nice and golden. So you want to make sure this gets pressed in really well because you don't want your bar to be crumbly on the, to crumble on you when it's all done. So just work at this for a minute and get that all ready to go and get it in the oven for 18 to 20 minutes. Right, so for the caramel layer, I have one and a half cups of butter that I'm melting in my saucepan on the stove. I also want to add to that one and a half cups of brown sugar. You can use yellow sugar. I just happen to have brown sugar in the house. It'll, it'll probably make my caramel a little bit darker. And I have one third of a cup of corn syrup. The corn syrup is thicker than regular syrup. And I have a can of sweetened condensed milk. Now you're going to want to bring this to a boil on medium heat. And you're going to make sure you stir it constantly when it's boiling, otherwise it's going to burn. And then you're going to boil that for five minutes. So I'll show you what it looks like when it's coming to a boil and I'll show you the, a few different stages of what it looks like. So for now we just want to get this mixed in, medium heat, until it comes to a boil. You can walk away from it a couple of times while you're just at this stage, but definitely once it starts to boil you want to be stirring constantly. Alright, I'm starting to see a few little bubbles. It's not at a boil quite yet. It is getting nice and thick as well. So I'm not going to start my timer yet. I'll show you when I start the timer. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so it's been almost three minutes before, I and mean, I haven't timed yet. It's now starting to boil, and I've been stirring it. because You can hear, just take a listen, where it's very hot on the bottom, and you want to make sure you're not burning. So I'm going to start my timer now because we are starting to boil and we want to continue to stir. You don't want to walk away from this because you will burn it and you'll ruin the whole batch. So make sure you get all parts of the pan, edges, bottom. We're doing this for five minutes. So just keep your watch on, keep the time on, keep a look on your watch. Make sure you're watching your time and make sure you're stirring. 
and I'll show you what this looks like in a few minutes. I am at the two minute mark and you can see it's boiling quite hard. I turned mine down just a touch on the temperature. Keep stirring till we get to five minutes. Alright, we're at the five minute mark. Make sure you're using a silicone spatula because you don't want to melt your spatula. So we're going to take this off the heat. I'm just going to move to my island a minute. So I'll just stop the video so I can get in place. Alright, so I've removed it from the heat and now they, you want to beat it or keep stirring until you see it starting to thicken. Basically, you're just cooling it down a little bit before we're going to pour this on the bottom layer. My bottom layer is almost going to be coming out of the oven. So we're just going to let this cool down a little bit before we pour it on. Alright, so I've got my base that came out of the oven, so it's lightly golden around the edges. And if you come take a look, you can see that the caramel is starting to thicken. So we're going to pour this over top now. Very hot. When you're doing this on the stove, be careful with bubbles splattering too because you could burn yourself. All right, so we want to get this layer in here. And then we want to get the chocolate on right away because you want the chocolate to melt. So there's two ways you can do this. You can melt some chocolate chips and spread it on later once it's cool, the caramel has cooled a little bit. But I find it's the easiest way is if you have your semi-sweet chocolate squares, we're gonna have 12 of these chocolate squares, and we are, I chopped it up in my food processor, or you can chop it by hand, and we're gonna sprinkle this on, and we're gonna let these melt for a couple minutes before we spread this. Alright, so we're just going to get this on. Because the caramel is so hot, this will melt the little bits of chocolate. So I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes before I gently spread it. Because you don't want it to mix into your bottom layer, you want it to sit on the top. Alright, so we're going to let this sit for a few minutes and then we'll spread it. All right, so just very gently spread the chocolate. You don't want it to mix in with that bottom layer. So we're gonna get this all nice and smooth and then we're gonna put it in the fridge and you have to let this chill completely before you're gonna cut them. So you can cut these and you can put them in the freezer. They stay very nice in the freezer if they even last that long. All right, I'm gonna get my edges a little bit better here. Anyways, so give that recipe a try. My recipe's on the counter there. trick if you give your um, cookie sheet gentle shake you can make it all really nice and smooth on top <laughs> all right let me get that nice smooth top on there